Welcome back to Brick Wall Breakdowns, episode number 13. I'm Max Dean. You can find me on Twitter at TheMaxDean. And I am here, as always, with Kyron Samuels. At Kyron Samuels on Twitter, he is our resident offensive line expert here at Defiant Takes Football. All AFL offensive lineman as a pro, Division I before that. Um, his uncle was a many-time pro bowler in the NFL at the tackle position even before. So Kyron has been exposed to offensive line play from uh, a very young age. And he is a resource for us. Appreciate him very much. And we are going to be looking at Matthew Bergeron, the tackle slash guard from Syracuse today, who went in, I believe, the second round of the draft to the Falcons. So first of all, how are you doing today, man? Doing really good, man. I'm really excited about this one because uh, this is a guy that I was really, really high on a long time ago and kind of had to like hold my ground and stay firm in it because not a lot of people <laughs> talked about him. I mean, he played for Syracuse. Syracuse is not a small program by any means, but there are no Alabama or Georgia or Iowa or Ohio State, Michigan, what have you. So um, it's a little bit harder to kind of stake the claim for those guys early. Uh, but I'm really glad that I stuck with him and watched him because I really love what he did um, in, in his years as a starter. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, kind of just getting right into the breakdown a little bit. Um, he's a guy that I think has exceptional athleticism for the position. Uh, really, really good balance. It's, it's something you'll hear me talk about all the time in these breakdowns um, and evaluating offensive line. Uh, and he's a guy that I thought had plenty of upside, and he got better from 2021. I know some people thought that his 2021 was better than his 2022, but I disagree. I think he did a much better job in the run game this year. Uh, I think started, thought he started to round out a little bit more. Uh, he's a guy that had to kind of earn his key because he's a Canadian, man. And, you know, uh, some of the Canadians have, you know, the negative connotation that they're soft or that they aren't as physical <laughs> as the American guys. And uh, he kind of had to, you know, come o- uh, overcome a lot of that. So I- I'm really uh, happy to see him. We- he's the guy that we got to see at the Senior Bowl as well. So uh, going yep. into the Senior Bowl, he was the guy that I have been telling a ton of people about. Uh, watch for this kid. Watch for this kid. Um, and he, he when he got a chance to show uh, his ability against the big dogs, he went up against a lot of, you know, SEC guys. He was in that second group that was very talented, heavy with SEC pass rushers, Big 12 pass rushers. Uh, but he did a really, really good job all week showing that he can be, one, uh, physical at the point of attack because that was the point of contention with him, and also that he can hold up uh, against some of those speed rushers. And he did a damn good job all week. So I'm really happy we got to see him up close and personal. Um, mm-hmm. got to talk to him a little bit. So I'm really excited about this one because he's a guy that I think um, – Probably went a little bit lower than I would have taken him. But, I mean, look, he went with the second or third pick of the, uh, you know, second round. So he went very high. He went over a couple of guys that, you know, a lot of people thought would go in front of him. So uh, a very high investment pick from the Atlanta Falcons here. So I'm really excited to see him get into the uh, swing of the season because he's getting added to an offense that I think has a ton of potential. And when you add him, uh, B. John Robinson, uh, then they have, you know, Kyle Pitts. Drake London, a lot of those guys. So I'm really excited to watch this Atlanta Falcons offense play this year. Yeah, he went with the 38th overall pick. So relatively early in the second round. Um, So my question for you is, do you think that he's going to be a tackle or guard long term? Because as far as I understand it, he's going to most likely play at guard as a rookie and probably end up starting, I think, at left guard. Um, But you know, there are a fair number of players who start at guard early yeah. in the career, end up a tackle. What do you think the long-term outcome for him is? Well, I think him and Skaronsky have, you know, similar viewpoints going forward. I think they can play whatever you need them to play. Uh, he played left tackle. I thought he was a plug-and-play right tackle guy because um, he has the arm length. He has the size of 6'5", 320 pounds. Um, but he's also, with his, uh, you know, ability as, as a pass blocker and as a run blocker, that a lot of people see projection as a guard. And I have zero problem with him playing guard. I think he can be an all pro level guard and it may end up being the best thing for him in his career. So, um, you know, they have, they have a really good offensive line. I won't say really good, but they could be a really good offensive line there in Atlanta. Um, they have, you know, Lindstrom at, at right guard and then Bergeron, if he plays to his ability level, they could have the, the best interior uh, guard situation in the NFL outside of, um, uh, you know, excuse me, Kansas city. Uh, with those two guys, with Thune and, and Smith. So I think they could, if Bergeron plays at his ability level, they could be the second best duo as early as this year. So I'm really excited to see it, but I do think that he could play on either side of the ball at either tackle spot. I do think he's that uh, talent heavy. And I think with the refinement and any like any other young guy, he could turn out to be a really good player at any of those positions. All right. So um, this is going to be taped from 2021 because that's what I could get my hands on. And as you alluded to, 
the run blocking is not quite as good. Uh, I I think let's just get into it. We'll talk about it as we see it. I think we've kind of prefaced it enough, but just too late out there. This is 2021 um, versus Clemson because that's what I could get, but I did want to take a look. So um, the first play we're going to see from the all 22 before the end zone, just because you don't, he goes off of the screen. And so I just wanted to make sure that, you know, we had the full view of him on this play, but the rest are going to be from um, the end zone cam only. Yeah, so coming out, he's playing against some really good talent here. You play – a lot of people go to the Clemson games. Uh, for SEC guys, you're going to go to the Georgia and Alabama games. You're going to want to see them against the best uh, level of competition, and that's what you see here from Matthew Bergeron. So you see a little bit of his athletic ability here, and once he gets his hands on how powerful he is, you know, watch how fast he reduces the surface and he gets in uh, and closes the space. Boom. He gives his guard a little bit of help and helps his guard come over to overtake that, and he gets out to the edge. So – uh, I really love his uh, play style. Look at his balance from his stance right here. Um, it's one of the things you hear me talk about. Uh, balance. And look at the right tackle stance as opposed to Bergeron stance. Who's mm-hmm. more apt to explode out of this stance? Who's more apt to uh, you know, hide whether it's run or pass? Uh, he, it's definitely Matthew Bergeron on the left side here. So you see him uh, take this first step. Boom. There's no wasted movement. There's no false step. He covers ground. He gets that, that first foot in the ground, and then it's boom. He gets those choppy steps that you like to see. Um, from an offensive lineman here and balance throughout the entire rep. And then he takes this guy uh, from right there at the edge of the line to off the screen. And that's what you want to see from a left tackle on this play. Um, There's a little misdirection play, a little RPO type stuff here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you really do love to see him work that technique and have that uh, natural pop and ability and the wherewithal. You see him giving the little the hand to help uh, his his interior guy here. Uh, mm-hmm. And they get out there and get on that, that faster guy and, and get his hands on and really take him out of the play. Right. There's always subtleties to this, right? So like you say, well, you know, you'd love to get to have him try and get hands like inside here, but because he's keeping his right hand on the interior defender there, I I mean, you know, he's kind of an, so it's an odd front, right? But whatever. So he's, he's got his, he's trying to keep his right hand on him to give his guard a little help. And so he's got to keep his left hand outside because if he doesn't, then there might be a path for that, you know, two point stance edge rusher to get around him. So just does a nice job there, but again, you just you can only see him up to this point. But that's the first yeah. play. And we'll move on to the second one here. But yeah, so Clemson does some very unique stuff with with their fronts and um this is this is an odd front. You know, they have uh, a, a zero nose, so the center's covered, but both guards are uncovered. So I don't know how they identified it during the week of practice, but I'm going to assume that they identified it as an odd front, which means three down. Uh, and then they're going to account for the outside guys as overhang. So uh, however they decided to divvy it up responsibility wise, uh, you're going to see him on an island a lot. And that's what he does here, man. I, I love the pass set. Like I said, from the balance from the set, he's he's right in his position right now. He's ready to explode. He's ready for anything that comes. And he does a good job, in my opinion, of not bird dogging. What I mean by bird dogging is some guys you can tell whether it's a run play or a pass play by their stance. So he's not a guy that is too heavy on his hands or has his hand up or looks like he's going to change it up based off of what the play is. It's the same mm-hmm. every time his hands are right there out of the gate. Boom. He takes the same quick, powerful step that he took in the run game. He has it in, in this pass protection. Uh, then he gets his hands on. And once he gets his hands on, he does a fantastic job of keeping them inside and moving his feet. Watch his feet move the entire time. He does his feet don't come together and click, uh, and which is what happens when uh, you get a little bit off balance. And that's how you get some of those push pulls, those dip and rip moves that you see people uh, get those offensive linemen off balance. Because when your feet come together, you have no base to work from. You have no power to counteract that stuff. Uh, but he keeps his feet nice. His feet are hot. They're wide. They're moving. And he does a good job of just moving this guy out of the place. So uh, 10 has the ability to see where the ball is. He doesn't have eyes in the back of his head. So a little mm-hmm. bit of, of – that little bit of move at the end where he looks like he's getting up field a little bit means absolutely nothing. He's dominated mm-hmm. this ref. He's taken him out of the play. And this is what you want to look like. Well, yeah, I mean, also that quarterback's holding the ball for, you know, way longer than you can <laughs> ever expect an offensive lineman to protect. So, but I also love that, you know, this is a smaller player that he's going up against and he still manages to get great, a uh, really nicely time punch and like hits right in the sort of, it's not the armpits, but it's like the jersey armpit. Like he gets right there, gets like a handful of jersey on 
both hands. So like, that's just a really nice job. Um, he's just very patient and it could be easy to miss on a guy that's smaller, more slender than you. Right. I will say I am not a fan just like from a pretty game of football standpoint, orange and white on orange and white, man. I don't know how people watch <laughs> this every year. <laughs> it's ugly. <laughs> All uh, right. You get a little bit more of a traditional three down front here. So you don't have as many guys walked up on the line of scrimmage. So this is much easier to identify. Um, so, but that's just, you know, kind of, you need to know these things if you're an offensive lineman. It changes up your responsibility. It changes up your path if you're going to be, uh, you know, doubling or if you're passing off a twist or a stunt. Uh, but this is something that I really like from him. Again, look at this first step. There's no wasted movement. There's no false step. He comes flat down the line. He knows he's getting up to 47. And he shows a lot of his pass, um, excuse me, his run blocking ability uh, in this game. You know, this is some of the, some of the stuff people had questions about. Uh, could he be a dominant run blocker? Could he get to the point of attack and hold his ground? Uh, could he get to the second level? And he shows you he can do all of that here. So he, he cuts off the gap for one, and then boom, he whams that, that outside shoulder and replaces the guy. So it, depending on the scheme and how you're taught to block, he could be taught to reach this guy. And that means to get on the play side shoulder, on that right shoulder. But, you know, it doesn't always work out like that. It, it's, it's a very odd angle. Uh, it's very tough to get all across face a lot of the times. So you take the, the defender where he wants to go. It's a good job of adjusting on the fly because uh, the way this play is run, it's hitting backside, uh, but you never know how he's taught to block it. He could be taught to reach it. It just could be a natural uh, way the play bends. So uh, mm -hmm. in any event, he takes the initiative and he removes the guy from the gap to eliminate any possibility of that guy making a play. So this is something stuff I love to see from Bergeron. His hands are in the right place and he finishes through blocks. It's something I really, really like about him. He finishes through blocks and he plays with great effort. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, this is a linebacker. So this is a guy that, you know, has good movement skills, right? And he doesn't get shaken at all. Right? He, he closes the space very nicely. And again, balance is great for him. And no wasted movement here. Although there is a play coming up where I'm not, maybe there's just something I'm not aware of that would cause him to move his feet the way that he does. But you'll have to tell me when we see that. All right, go into the next one. Okay, again, so this is just one of those reps where, um, in my opinion, it showcases a, a little bit of his athleticism. Again, there's no wasted movement here. Uh, he gets where he needs to go. He's washing this guy down the line of scrimmage. This is a difficult block. So even if, you know, let's say they, they keep the ball here uh, with the running back, he has to hit through that gap. Bergeron is creating the space for him. There's nothing there. But if he were to have the ball here, he has a clear path to run off of Bergeron's foot because he displaces the down lineman. So even though he's slanting across face and is at a weird angle, he removes him. So look where he starts, where they make initial contact. Boom, they make initial contact here. Look where he ends up at the end of the rep. He, he just completely displaces him from that B gap. Uh, and that's what you want to see. Because like I said, if he were able to uh, hand off that ball here, um, and I think he probably should have handed the ball off here if he's reading um, he's probably reading the end man on the line of scrimmage. So he sees that guy go down and he pulls it. Uh, but th the linebacker is just replacing the responsibility there. Um, that right. could be something that was missed on, on film or just sticking to your basic principles. But uh, Sean Tucker is a really good back. He's with the um, the Bucks now, I believe. So when in doubt, I would hand it off, uh, especially when you got a guy like Bergeron there. Uh, but Bergeron, if the event that they did hand that ball off, he did a great job of displacing his guy and giving his running back a little bit of a crease there where there was none. Right. Well, you see number 12 coming down to replace. And it's like, the other thing is just from a pure numbers standpoint, right? Like, like hat on hat, man on man, you should know that this play is not going to work. If you keep the ball, like you're, you have less blockers than you have defenders in this case. So yes, I 100% agree with you, but in terms of what Bergeron does, he does a good job because you already are at a disadvantage because of the way that the defensive lineman is shaded, right? If his goal is to uh, knife upfield, like if he is not trying to play uh, like a gap contain and he's just trying to penetrate, then you are at a disadvantage if he's already a little bit into the gap that he wants to get to. So he does, and this is Clemson, right? This is, this is, I don't know who this player is specifically, but this is not a slouch of a defensive front in terms of physical ability. And yeah. he does 
a really nice job of getting in there and basically sealing him off before he has a chance to get into the backfield. Yeah. It's one of the things you, you really love about Bergeron. Again, you see the finishing ability. Like he finishes blocks. He finishes through the whistle. So he displaces his guy and he continues to stay on that back hit, man, as long as he could. So I really do uh, just love the amount of effort that he plays with. There's one play. I, I don't think I put it. It's not the one that's coming up. So I, I didn't put it in, but he, he, uh, finishes off a block and it's not the greatest block, but he ends up just pancaking him and just, you know, dropping his body on him, gets up, mm-hmm. stands over him, flexing. Like I, you gotta love that. Like you gotta right. love the energy that you bring and, and finishing yep. off that way. So um, you're not going to see it right now, but I it definitely stood out to me. All right. So this is one, I think where I'm not really sure exactly what's going on here. So please, but you you educate me. Well, they start off in a, in a traditional four man front, and they kind of shift to a little bit of a, a an odd look. So they go uh, they go uh, from weak here to strong here, uh, which kind of probably throws off sixty seven a little bit. But what Matthew Bergeron is doing, he's probably solo with this guy. So based off the principles, the strong side is to the right. Uh, he's probably on a solo island with this guy no matter where this guy goes. And that's Miles Murphy. I believe he went first round this year yeah. uh, as well. But um, his first thought is to, boom, cut off the inside because he's solo with this guy. If he's lined up in the gap, he's shaded inside, where's the first place that he can beat you? Inside. Mm-hmm. If you take a traditional outside outside set or you take a traditional vertical set, uh, you're just basically giving him the gap. So what he does, even if uh, you don't know what the defensive lineman is going to do, right? You don't know if he's going to go outside because that's his principle or he's going to stay inside. So your job is to protect the inside first. So I have no problem with the out with the inside step uh, because of how balanced he is. Look, boom, he doesn't overstep. He doesn't let his feet come together and click. He keeps that right foot in, and boom, he keeps that same base, and now he's in a position to redirect and come back out here and block his guy, and that's exactly what he does. It's that inside hand in first, really good placement with that, uh, and then he kind of takes away a lot of the leverage because if he has his hands on, there's not a ton that the defense line can do except throw a counter move. And uh, at that position, he's very, very unlikely to to beat you when you have that base, you have that balance, and you have an arm on. So I think this is a really good rep from Bergeron here, uh, even with the, the the guard on his heels, uh, because that could trip you up. That could throw you off mm-hmm. your game, cause your feet to click, and then you get beat that way. But uh, because he has that base and he keeps his feet shoulder width apart, uh, does a great job setting and replacing his feet and his hands, he's able to come off and block this guy. And I think that's a, a really good rep, and it shows off his acumen for one, uh, his pass blocking ability, uh, his athleticism, and some of his power uh, to be able to redirect so fast and, and get out there. So a uh, really good rep from him. And I, I, this is just all the stuff that you love about Matthew Bergeron. And while I think he and why I think he could be a really good tackle on the next level, but I see what everybody sees as well. If you hit, put this guy inside a guard, uh, he's going to be not a mismatch per se, but he's going to be able to be one of the more athletic guys on the interior. And the way he blocks and his nasty and his mean streak, you have no doubt that he could be a very, very good, a high level playing guard at the next level. So, do you think that the reason that sixty-seven moves outside then and they kind of cross paths? is because he's also concerned about Murphy moving inside. and Because this is right. like, this is just this a is quick exactly pass, why, so. Yeah, this is exactly why defensive linemen stunt like that. So running back a little bit further, you can kind of see uh, from, from the beginning, you see him shift late. This mm-hmm. is exactly why defensive coordinators and, and defensive line coaches do this. It's because it causes confusion about responsibility. You see the center, he's calling out the mic right there, uh, which is kind of funny because it probably should be, the mic should probably be 46. Seven because <laughs> to the right side, so it's just yeah. it causes it causes a lot of confusion, right? So that's the that's the idea right now um, that you want to cause confusion, you want to cause disarray. But when you have a guy like Bergeron, it kind of helps dispel some of that because even when a guy like sixty seven may have it wrong, uh, you have a guy that can make it right like Bergeron. Yeah, I got you. All right, cool. So that's gonna do it for our look at Matthew Bergeron today. So nice pick. Uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. It kind of seems like if they know how to do one thing, it's uh, get good offensive linemen and running backs in and, and uh, you know, develop them. So this is definitely a situation where you can put Bergeron at guard, have your best five out there, and then at some point, if Jake Matthews retires or moves on, I know that he just signed a contract with them relatively recently, but, you know, it's – how these things go, it might they might decide to move on from him, move to a cheaper option at tackle. Um, this that's the possibility where Bergeron can move outside, 
or maybe this same group of guys just sticks together for a little bit longer. So either way, the Falcons certainly look to have a functional offense from a run perspective, and then probably a lot of play action off of that, meaning that it will be, you know, effective. Certainly, I don't think anyone doubts that. I think the real question is upside, especially when you get to the playoffs and so on, if, if you get to the playoffs. But um, I think in terms of soundness, I don't think we're going to have any issues with that in Atlanta. And Bergeron is a nice addition to that. And I know Nick liked him as well. So Nick was a guy who got a chance to talk to him at the Senior Bowl too. And Nick, uh, Syracuse alum, this one's for you too. All right. Appreciate y'all. You can find me at Twitter on Twitter at the magazine. You can find Kyron at Kyron Samuels. Hit him up for any offensive line questions that you have. You can also find all of our written work, including Kyron's offensive line focus pieces at defiantakesfootball.com. Find all of our brick wall breakdowns here on the channel. So you can go back, check those out. We're all on a playlist and you can also subscribe and get these every single Tuesday throughout the entirety of the season. So we're almost done with our 2023 prospects. We're going to be doing a couple of 2024 summer scouting guys at the offensive line position before we jump into our 2023 breakouts for the NFL and then just whoever we feel like talking about for the regular season. But that's going to do it for us. Thanks again, Kyron. Talk to you very soon, and we will see you all very soon.